kind of give you a little background about why I developed the company. Really strong understanding of what's going on in terms of the regulatory environment, cutbacks for CMS for reimbursement for skilled nursing facilities, better clinical outcomes, patients getting care within their homes, less readmission rates. But then what really hit at home for me was my sister has multiple sclerosis and at one point was quadriplegic and blind. My, I can talk about this. I'll grab this as pictures up for the video. Keep this mic up. Sorry. Does this count as my time? No, no, we can let you off. <laughs> uh, my sister's quadriplegic and blind and my uncle had ALS and he required 24 hour care seven days a week. We really experienced this extreme what families go through when you cannot find affordable caregivers and or have to find caregivers living long distance and having to coordinate the care. So I developed CareLinks to essentially, after seeing the growing demographic demands and also addressing uh, my family's problems. The one thing that really stuck out to me as, as I did more research is one in four Americans are currently caregivers for a loved one. ARP values that at $450 billion. Um, we all know the growing trends, but what people might not realize is that traditional agencies mark up the cost of care about 75%, and on average in the United States, it costs $43,000 a year. Medicare covers the first 100 days. If you don't have long-term care coverage, it's out of pocket. And so until you qualify for government subsidized programs for Medicaid or Medi-Cal, it's a huge problem. A lot of families end up having to resort to places such as Craigslist classifieds to source caregivers, but as a result, they end up being potentially putting themselves to a lot of risk with people stealing from them, having the inability to hold them accountable. So CareLinks is a way, what we do is, we've launched eight months ago, we have 5,500 caregivers across the United States. We've partnered with a company called Backgrounds Online that does all the background checks, sex offender ID verification, criminal history, credentials, licensures. We have references of, the, of prior employers, reviews from prior employers. And so we're helping families find caregivers that match their specific needs and budget. Um, but what was interesting is, since the agencies and institutions are growing so fast, they're also using our platform for their own recruitment efforts. Um, on average, we're saving families um, versus the traditional agencies about $10,000 per year. So now families can easily go to the site. They can say, I'm looking for a female caregiver with five years of experience with dementia, lives in Sacramento, speaks Spanish. Then they can schedule a video interview them on the site. And then we give them the tools to manage all the care, to ensure an hour worked is an hour build. When the caregiver shows up, they check in and check out. At the end of the week, an electronic invoice is sent to the family. We have online collaboration tools where the family, um, the primary caregiver, um, the patient, and any other type of care provider that's involved in, the, in their loved one's care can all communicate and collaborate. And then the families can conveniently pay for the care online. On the agency front, we have some of the largest agencies in the United States are actually now using our platform for recruitment. Instead of posting jobs in Indeed and Monster and sifting through resumes, they're going, okay, I have a client that's looking for a female five years experience with dementia, speak Spanish. And now they get the profiles, they're video interviewing them, they're really speeding up their onboarding process, especially in light of the fact that caregivers, they have about 75% annual turnover. We're being approached by large institutions that want to private label the solution. Um, so what we're just trying to do, again, my main motivation for all of this is to make the market more transparent and give families the ability to find that exact caregiver. Don't just search online, get a phone number for some institution, and then they'll send someone to your house. At least give the families more options. I want to search on price, language, religion, my service needs empower them to find that caregiver more effectively. And so even the institutions are looking at white, uh, private labeling our product. I just put Homestead, they're not a customer. I'm just giving an example. Um, so that's CareLinks. Uh, and um, yeah, so we, yeah. Yeah, um, awesome. Congratulations. How are you generating demand on the supply side? Like on the on the repeat, caregivers? Repeat the oh yeah. Um, so the question is how are we um, aggregating the caregivers, developing the supply side? That, believe it or not, has not been a difficult thing. We're getting about 150 caregivers per week. Um, we're having a hard time just giving them the size of our staff to keep up with the screening and vetting. 
but there's so many caregivers that right now are underemployed who do work, we have a lot of them who work for agencies that are still looking for supplemental income and other part-time opportunities. So we're going to like nursing schools, nursing programs, career centers, um, even at times we have a job, we can't source it, we're going out and posting jobs at schools to recruit the caregivers, vetting them. Supply side hasn't been that much of an issue. Uh, yes. Yeah. Related to that, do you yeah. provide any career development for the caregivers? So we, okay, the, yeah, sorry, the question is career development. So right now we're actually partnering, we're going down to Texas next week. There's a company called MM Learn. They have online curriculum for the caregivers. We are incorporating that um, into it. We do have a resource center on the on the site right now that can walk them through it. But we want to be more engaged. Would be ideal to have. Okay, they've been they've passed some program. The reality is, majority of the caregivers that we have on there that are finding employment are CNAs, and so majority of them go through programs. We validate their license with their state. Are they active? They're not active, and so. Yeah, and the ideally, I, I definitely, we're planning on doing that. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how are you differentiating yourselves from like other similar sites? I think I've seen a couple other ones. The, um, how are we differentiating ourselves versus our competitors? We're pretty unique in that what we're trying to do is manage the entire continuum of care from finding the caregiver to managing all the care on the site to handling the invoicing, but then having the online collaboration tools, which then has the engagement of, it's essentially like a private wall forum where the families can involve, like for my sister, for example, she is going to the, her neurologist or physical therapist to her homeopath to her GP and who was a burden of communication put upon? It was my sister, which was the wrong person. And so let's see if everyone starts using it. Those features are there. And some people at least get daily updates when the caregiver checks in and checks out. At least the family has some archive of what the caregiver did. But those are things that we're trying to do to differentiate ourselves. The reality is the problem's so large that I hope that there's going to be more people doing it. 